Hi, welcome to the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. Come on in and have a seat. This is Stories in Art. Please feel free to pause the video whenever you'd like to get a closer look at the artwork. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Charlotte. I'm a gallery teacher at the Yale University Art Gallery. Today, I will be telling a story called The Powers of Circe. The story takes place in ancient Greece and is from the Odyssey, an epic Greek poem by the famous storyteller Homer. The Odyssey tells the story of Greek hero Odysseus's long and winding journey home from the Trojan War, which took 10 years. The part of the story we are focusing on today is when Odysseus meets a goddess named Circe. As I tell the story, we will look at a few artworks from the gallery. These two woodcuts made around 1540 in Italy show two scenes from the story. Take a close look. What do you notice? I notice a woman whose fancy clothes are flying in the wind, and on the left it looks like she is drinking out of a special cup. I also see a boat in both prints. I wonder if that is how Odysseus traveled. This drawing was made by a German artist around the year 1530. Take a closer look. What do you notice? I see a person with wings in the center of the drawing. I wonder if that is Circe. Standing around her, I see animals dressed like people. Hmm. As I tell the story, keep looking at the art and see what else you notice. Circe lived on an island called Aea. Surrounded by a bright blue-green ocean, the island had sandy beaches and a deep forest where many magical plants grew. Above the forest and the beaches was a large mountain meadow where Circe lived in a big stone house. She had lived alone on the island for hundreds of years and had found ways to keep from being lonely. Using her magic powers, she created lion and wolf companions that followed her while she went about her daily tasks, tending to her herb garden, feeding her pigs and sheep, and weaving at her loom. Circe knew every inch of her island, and as she walked, the long meadow grasses parted for her, the trees turned as if to bow to her, and in the woods the wild animals fell under her command. Each day she watched the sea, for she was worried about visitors and the trouble they could bring. One day, while Circe was working at her loom, her wolves began howling. She went to her window and saw a ship. A group of bedraggled sailors emerged from the ship and began to walk toward Circe's house. In no time, she heard a knock on her door. A gruff voice called out, Hello, is anyone home? We are hungry and looking for shelter. Circe opened her door to the group of dirty, tired men. We have been traveling home for more for years and years, one man said. Please, could we rest here? Come in, come in, Circe replied. You may rest here, but you must be respectful. While the men made themselves at home, Circe prepared a feast. The men ate and ate the food, and soon they became relaxed and rowdy. They danced through the house and into the garden, breaking furniture and trampling plants. They didn't even apologize. Circe became frustrated and asked them to settle down, but they ignored her. She was annoyed that these loud men had taken over her home and continued to eat and eat her food. It was her house and her island, and she wanted it back. She needed to do something to protect herself and her home. When the men demanded dessert, Circe served them magical food that could turn men into animals. As the men became rowdier, she stood up, clapped her hands, and spoke a magical word. Instantly, the men transformed. They grew snouts, furry ears, tails, and hooves. She had changed them into barnyard animals. They baaed, mooed, oinked, and howled with unhappiness, but Circe just sent them outside to her animal pen. 
Her house finally peaceful again, she returned to her weaving. But Circe didn't know that one man named Eurylochus had been outside and had seen his companions change into animals. Terrified, he ran away from the house and back to the ship where the crew's leader, the great hero Odysseus, waited. When Eurylochus returned with news of what had happened, Odysseus immediately set off to save his crew. He followed the path down the beach, through the woods, over the mountain meadow, and to the door of Circe's house. He knocked and called out to her, Goddess Circe, please, would you let me in? I am hungry and tired and looking for my friends. When Circe heard this, she rolled her eyes and sighed, but still she let him in. She gave him her best food and wine and let him sit in her favorite chair. Circe was prepared to transform Odysseus into a pig and send him outside to join his companions if he was a danger to her. However, as they sat together and he told her the story of his long journey, she became more and more interested in this man. He was her equal, smart, powerful, and thoughtful. It had been a very long time since someone like this had come to her island. Odysseus started to look sad and put down his plate. What is it? Circe asked. Why don't you eat or speak? How could I keep eating when I know my friends are in the barnyard? He pleaded with her. Please, change them back to men. Circe looked at him and felt great fondness. Though she was proud and stubborn, she also enjoyed Odysseus's company and wanted him to be her friend. She explained how the men had acted and why she had turned them into animals. She told him, I will reverse the spell as long as you promise your men will behave respectfully. Odysseus agreed. Circe spoke the magical words and all of a sudden, the buying and the oinking stopped. Outside, her animal pen was full of men restored to their human form. Thank you, great goddess, they cried with joy. Circe decided to let Odysseus and his crew stay. The men befriended the wolves and lions, replanted the garden, fixed the furniture, and became fat and happy from Circe's hospitality. Fall turned into winter, which melted into spring, and then, with the arrival of warm weather and fair sailing winds, summer returned. Odysseus and his men had stayed on Circe's island for an entire year. It was time for them to continue their journey. Circe gave the men bags of food and advice for facing gods and monsters. Then she waved goodbye as they sailed into the sun. She was sad to see them go, but happy to have her island to herself again. And she knew they'd be back. The end. In the story, Circe loves her island, her garden, and her animal friends. Imagine that you could live on your very own island. What would it look like? What would you do there? Using a paper and a pencil, draw the island that you imagine. We hope you have fun. Thank you for joining us for Stories and Art at the Yale University Art Gallery. We hope you enjoyed listening and looking with our storytellers.